Hello, it's me. Welcome to the video. So today is a very exciting day, one that I'm sure we've all been waiting for. That is the day I am printing my manuscript for edits, more edits. And I don't even know like what draft you would call this because basically what happened was I wrote the first draft all in first person. I started to edit it. I got maybe like a third of the way, half of the way through before I decided that I was gonna switch to third person. And so now this is the full draft where I switched to third person. I basically rewrote the entire thing because it was more than just a matter of changing all the eyes to like Florence's name and stuff like that. Like I, I added a lot, I really beefed it up, which you'll be able to see when I let you know the final word count. And I also like edited as I went, so that's why I feel like I'm in a good spot to print off a paper version because I'm getting more into like the nitty gritties of it. So I don't know if this you would consider this a full second draft or I'm gonna call it like a second and a half draft, okay? But anyways, we're gonna print this guy off today. I wanna try something different with my formatting because in the past, um, I don't have one here, hold on. Okay. <laughs> We're back. For example, what I normally have been doing in the past is, this is my Scum at the End of the Road printed manuscript. The full draft, I just kind of wrote like this, like just a regular eight and a half by 11. I think I double spaced, one and a half spaced. For Thick as Blood, oh gosh, this is a bigger boy because this is like a full novel. Again, same way, just eight and a half by 11. I think I only like one space this because by this point, this had been like what? I don't know, maybe like my fourth or fifth draft. So it was pretty like set in stone. I'm thinking for this one, I'm going to see how it looks if I just do like um, instead of a vertical layout, a horizontal layout and kind of do like two columns. You know, I like trying new things every once in a while. So to put a little something in perspective, the very first draft of Cherub of Rose Crest ended up being 14,223 words. This draft that I just finished is sitting at 36,378 words. So I added more than 20,000 words to the point where it was a novella and I'm thinking it might be feeling more like a novel at this point. So I don't know. We'll see how I, I feel at the end. Cause I feel like I'm like right on the cusp where I could say, oh, it's a novella or oh, it's a novel. I mean, a really, really short novel and like a more long novella, but I feel like I could go either way with this. So we'll see how it feels. Cause I think at this point it's more of like a feeling. But anyways, let's get into the sort of formatting thing and maybe I can like show you a little bit more of like what I mean. All right, so this is what we have to work with. I'm just gonna start by changing the page size. Let's do eight and a half by 11 and then we'll do orientation landscape. Okay, we're getting there. Ooh, <laughs> this looks whack. Columns. To be fair, I've never done this before and I should probably have like Googled it, but, oh, I just did two columns, easy. Um, I think I want my margins a little bit bigger because I do want to be able to write in them. So I'm just going to hit control all. Well, I do actually want to change my line spacing. Let me go. Let's try to layout margins. Let me go to, yeah, because I had it at custom before. What does normal look like? Okay, cool. I like that. We got the page numbers. Okay. I think this looks good. Ish. And 97 pages. That's a lot. Okay, I'm going to run a test print. I'm going to do like, I don't know, three pages just to see what it looks like. All right, let's see. Um, The font's kind of big. Like this is what it's looking like. Do I want to go with a smaller font? Although bigger font means it's easier to catch mistakes. So I might want to do that too. Maybe I do want to stick with the big font. Okay, that's fine. Cool. My next question is, do I have a binder to put this in? Let's take a look. What's this? Oh. Okay. I have options. Okay, good. I was frightened that I wouldn't have any binders. Okay, how about there's that one? Let's see. Ooh, 
There's a white one. I'll do that. Perfect. All right. Now the third thing I wanna make sure is that when I hole punch my pages, nothing important gets cut off. My hole punch is kind of janky. There's no way to tell if it's centered. That's okay. Let's hope for the best. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Perfect. Okay. We're getting somewhere. These are not centered. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Let us print out the rest of the beast. Fingers crossed. And this is the part where I watch the printer like a hawk because printers in general are notorious for, I don't know, not working. I'm also printing in batches of like 25. If something does go wrong, I don't have to like scramble to like try and cancel it. I don't know, I'm really paranoid about printing large documents. If you've seen any of my other printing on my manuscripts, you know. <laughs> and this time I feel like I have a decent printer. I mean. Things are going well so far. I'm on the last quarter. There is a lot. Ugh. Okay. As soon as the printer's done doing its thing, I'll talk through like how I'm feeling right now. Ah, it's done. This is crazy to me. It feels like so much when it's printed out versus like on a screen. This is all 36,000 some hundred words. Like if you've ever typed up a story, a manuscript, anything really, and printed it out, it just feels more real to have something in your hands full of your own words and your story that you've been working on, in my case, a couple of years, which is really bad, I'm sorry. But to know that I am one step closer to finishing it, really digging it right now. So next step for me is to hole punch this guy. There's also some other things I wanna do to kind of like set myself up for success, which I'll go through, but next, Hole punch. So my hole punch is like 10 years old. Um, oh geez, it's just like, it's kind of all like yellowed and janky, but it gets the job done. I just can't do too many pieces of paper at once. As you can see, the first couple pages I did are not quite even, but that's all right. I hope they all fit. I only have like a half inch. Well, I think, okay. The other binder I have is like one inch. I think this might be a half. So hopefully this is big enough. Uh-oh, <laughs> I 
did like six pages. I think that's too much. Okay, let's do. Let's see. One, two, three. Okay, four pages. We can do four pages. That's fine, right? Three is the magic number. Okay, if I can do three pages at a time, we'll be good. There's 97 pages. <laughs> oh, jeez. So the next thing I want to do, am I in focus? Okay. The next thing I want to do is kind of print out some house rules, if you will, or style rules. Basically, my story is kind of, it's supernatural, right? You know, it's basically about ghosts and a cemetery and there are certain rules to the world and there's certain rules when it comes to the names of things and groups of people. For example, in this story, kind of death, like the word death and the word like live and alive are capitalized because they are in reference to specific things. Death is like a way of being. And uh, certain characters, for example, people who died more recently will freely use contractions versus characters who died maybe later on don't, um, or early on, I guess. Yeah. The older the dead, the more proper way of speaking and the use of certain idioms and language is just different. And in order for me to maintain consistency, I want to print off a guide that I can reference as I'm editing. So I'll have my manuscript on one side and my guide right next to it. So as I'm reading, I can make sure everything is how I set it to be. In publishing houses, this is called rules or house rules or style. From what I know, it's something that is fairly common when it comes to magazines and newspapers and things of that nature. Because there is a lot to keep track of in my story, I am going to be printing off kind of my own version. And I realize that this might be something that would benefit others. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. So let's get started. All right, so here we have my document, basically cherub house rules at the top. For the purposes of this story, the weather is gonna have a role in it. I mean, weather should always have some type of role in your story, but it's just something I wanna keep consistent, basically. <laughs> capitalize, don't capitalize, for example, um, like death, 
um, life, et cetera, et cetera, uh, versus things like, um, I don't want to capitalize dying if I, if I ever say that. Yeah, living, et cetera, et cetera. I can't spell. Contractions, so characters who use contractions, for example, my narrator uses contractions, Florence uses contractions, um, Luca obviously because he is the most recently deceased so he died in the early 2000s so he's gonna use contractions versus some older folks like Wolf. He um, is a doctor and he's very prim and proper so he doesn't really use contractions. Josephine doesn't normally unless she's mad <laughs> um so yeah things like that uh the narrator is kind of a character sometimes the narrator pulls out and almost has an opinion on things the narrator is very like quippy i don't know has like a slight influence in the story so i wanted to give the narrator a set of rules as well for when they do and don't chime in next abilities depending on the character and the length of their death circumstances either surrounding their death or what they go through kind of pick up certain abilities same thing if you have like um a power system in your story for example like thick as blood you know i had a whole system revolved around skin walking this is a good thing to always have handy so you know who can do what what their limitations are what their abilities are why why not that kind of thing next i have characters rosecrest the cemetery itself is a character Character. And there is certain things that the cemetery just kind of, I don't know, does. It's ethereal, sometimes vague, but I want to solidify it. So I'm adding the cemetery to my list of characters, even though it's not actually a person. Obviously my main characters and then kind of secondary characters slash groups of people. And yeah, that's kind of it. So I, I wanted to keep this short and sweet just because this is something that I always want to have next to me when I'm editing. So I don't want a whole other book to have to flip through. It's just a more condensed, straightforward version to assist with editing. And also what I plan on doing is using a colored pen. I think I'll probably go with red. Something else that I got in the habit of doing when I was editing, I think thick as blood. As soon as I would get done with editing a page, I would put like a check at the top corner or I would put the date at the top corner saying, I have gone through this with a fine tooth comb, it's good to go. If I go multiple rounds through a story, I change up the color of what I'm using. And I'll also probably keep another scrap of paper handy in case there are things that I want to take a look at as a whole when I'm done. So for example, I think it was thick as blood. At one point, I kind of went through every character and what scenes they were in and took a look at a whole like how involved they were with the story to help with like pacing so I might do that for this for example if I notice that maybe one of my characters is in like three scenes back to back to back and then they're not in there for the whole rest of the story and then they just pop up at the end and it's like okay well an average reader might be like wait a second like who is this again you know something like that even after I go through with a fine comb it's good to like pull back and just get an overview and and look at flow, look at the timeline, look at all that stuff. So I hope my process kind of helped you out, maybe made it seem a little bit less daunting to print out a manuscript. Good luck with whatever project you are working on. All of the links to my stuff, including my website and socials will be down below. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.